one so today we're going to be doing a double bonnet and this is who it's inspired by and i just wanted to say that this is not a standard size and you might have to alter a few things for it to fit you properly but before we start we're going to get our first measurement and i'm just going to measure along my eyebrows and i'm going to make a chain length long enough that reaches from this point to this point before my skin for today's video, I'm going to be using acrylic, some scissors, tapestry needles, a 3.5 millimeter crochet hook, and also a five millimeter. I'm going to be using a five millimeter and acrylic. Before we start, you can either pre-measure the two points or you can even just measure as you go, which is what I'm going to do. I'm going to make a chain length long enough that reaches my two points. When you're measuring this, please make sure that you're not stretching the chain just because that will alter the way it fits. My measurement is 15 inches, so I ended up making a chain length of 45. So now I'm going to chain two and I'm going to skip the first stitch and go into the second one and I'm going to make a double crochet. I'm going to yarn over, go inside the loop, pull once, pull twice, and keep doing this until the end of the row. I want to weave my tail as I go, so I'm going to go inside this chain and pull the tail, and then I'm just going to continue making double crochets over it. After you finish your first row, you're going to chain two and flip your work, and then you're going to skip the first stitch to prevent any flaring because this counts as your first double crochet. So then you're going to go into the second stitch and continue making double crochets. I'm going to do this for about 11 rows. I might add one or two more depending on how it fits me. I forgot to mention that once you finish your row, you're going to go to the final stitch. If you don't go to the final stitch, you're going to have slanted sides. But after you go to the final one, you chain two and then flip your work. I end up doing 11 rows, which is perfect for me. I really like the distance between my eyebrows and a little bit under my chin, about half an inch. And now we're going to connect it and work on our forehead and our head part. I ended up flipping over so that our working yarn is on our right side. And the width of my forehead is six and a half. And I'm going to make a chain length of 20, which is going to be perfect for me. But if you have a smaller or wider forehead, you might have to alter that. So I'm going to chain 20. One, two. After you have 20, you're going to go into the first stitch. And then you're just going to slip stitch. And then you're going to chain two one and two now you're going to make three regular rounds of double crochets so for this chain i'm actually going to be doing it a little bit differently because if i do it this way we're going to have this little gap so i'm actually going to flip it a little bit so the back loop is exposed and we're going to make double crochets on the back loops and now we don't have that gap that we had before so we're going to make double crochets on the back loops. I'm almost done with my first row and instead of slip stitching it in one of these two, I'm actually going to go to the third stitch, then slip stitch and chain two, one and two. And then I'm going to skip the first one just so that the seam is not as noticeable. And I'm going to continue this for two more rounds. I just finished my three regular rounds, so I'm going to start decreasing. I'm just going to slip stitch and chain two, skip the first stitch, and I'm going to make three normal double crochets. After you finish making the three normal double crochets, you're going to decrease. To decrease, you're just going to make a double crochet, but you're not going to close it on the second loop, and then you're just going to go in, loop once, and twice. I'm going to do it one more time. So I'm going to make three regular double crochets. And on the fourth spot, I'm just going to go in, only go on the first two, yarn over, go in, go on the first two, and then fully close the last three. So for this row, we're going to be decreasing every three stitches. I just finished my first decreasing row, so I'm just going to slip stitch and chain two, one, two, skip the first stitch, make two double crochets. For this row, we're going to be decreasing every two stitches, 
and you might have to try this on a couple of times and make sure it's something that works best for you because this pattern is adjustable to your own measurements so what works for me might not work for you i'm going to continue making double crochets and decreasing every two stitches for the next couple of rows i'm going to be decreasing every two stitches and we're going to continue this until our hole is small enough to fit our hand after the three regular rows i did for the forehead i actually ended up decreasing for four rows and now my hole is big enough for my hand to fit and now we're going to get ready to close it off so i'm going to decrease every other stitch so i'm going to chain one skip one make one double crochet decrease make one double crochet and decrease our hole has gotten smaller so now i'm going to decrease one more time but this time i'm going to decrease every single stitch i'm going to make one double crochet and then i'm going to start decreasing for every stitch so here goes one here goes another And now we're just going to do one double crochet at the end because that's all I have space for. So now our hole is small enough to close it off with a needle the same way you would with a plushie. I caught a long tail just in case and I also put my needle in. And I'm just going to go in and out of every single stitch that I have left. Now we're going to take our needle and just poke it inside to pull it down. Now we have a flat top, so now we can just tie it off like normal and it's going to be secure. This is what the curling looks like from the side and now we're going to round it off and work on our straps. For the straps, I made a chain length of 60 which is around 16 and a half or 17 inches. And now we're going to work on single crochets all around. I'm going to go to the last stitch that you see here and I'm just going to make a single crochet and we're going to try to make a single crochet in every single spot that you see without leaving an open gap. So I'm just going to go inside these two chains over here and try to make single crochets as close as I can because when we do our second round, the gaps are going to be noticeable. For the corner, I didn't do anything special. I just followed the curve. After you finish rounding off with a single crochet, we're going to make a chain of 60 and, and then we're going to go up and make half double crochets. I just finished making my single crochet row and I chained 60 to match the other side and now we're going to make half double crochets on the back loop just because I feel like this gives it a much cleaner look but you can also do it without the back loop if you like. I'm going to do this for two rows. You could do more or less depending on your preference but once I finish my two rows I'm going to come back. Now we're going to finish it off and cut it off and this is how I get rid of the loose ends so I'm going to flip this back and I'm going to go inside one of the loops and I'm going to split my yarn just so I have two strands and then I just put it under and then I just make a couple knots. This is what our bonnet curling looks like and now we're going to do the horns. Since our bonnet is already done, we are now going to switch to our 3.5 and we're also going to work on our horns. I already did one of them. Um, you can also like customize this to your own liking. You can make this longer or thicker and you can just use the way I do it as a guide. We're going to start off with a magic ring. I attempted this with a chain 2, but it was really difficult. Um, so I'm going to try to explain how to make a magic ring the best way I can. So you're going to put your hand like an L shape, and then you're going to hold your yarn underneath, and you're going to make an X. After you make your X, you're going to flip your hand, and you're going to have two lines. You're going to put your hook underneath, grab the top, and twist, and then chain 1. After you chain one, you're going to make four single crochets. Now we're going to tighten this. I'm going to grab a stitch marker and put it on the last stitch before the loop. And then I'm going to slip stitch on the first chain over here. And then chain one. Every row from now on, we're going to be increasing by one stitch so we're going to make two single crochets in the first stitch and we're going to end up with five 
So here's two and five. It's going to start curving inwards and that's okay because we're going to flip it later on. So we're going to slip stitch into the first stitch again and chain one and also move our stitch marker. For the third row, we should have six stitches. So we're going to do two, one, and two, six. And now we're going to slip stitch and we're going to do this until we reach row five. And by that point, we should have eight stitches. I just finished my fifth row, which is eight single crochets. And I place a stitch marker over here to keep it in place while I flip it inside out. So to flip it inside out, you're just going to stick your crochet hook all the way till the end. And you're going to grab the tail from the magic ring. After it's in, you just pull it out. After you flip it inside out, we have five rows left and we're going to increase in every single one of them in the beginning. And then I'll come back for the last row, which would be our 11th row. I just finished my 10 rows and it matches perfectly with my other one. You can continue this and make it more longer and wider. Um, if you do want to make it wider, instead of starting with four single crochets, maybe start with six or eight and see how that works for you. And then for the last row, we're going to put two single crochets in every single stitch. After you're done, this is what our horns look like and I'm going to show you how to get rid of this. So I'm just going to put my hook inside and just poke it through and just put my tail in. But don't pull hard enough that it goes inside out. And then for this part, I'm just going to grab a random loop over here and then just tuck it in like this. Because it's going to be sewed so it's not going to be noticeable anyways. And now with the loose ends, I just kind of tuck it in so it forms as stuffing. And now we can put our horns in the bonnet. For the placement of the horns, I just tried it on and I put the horns in a place that I like the most. And if you want like an idea of where I'm going to put mine, so look at this corner. I'm going to do about a finger, which is half an inch. And then I'm going to go behind these two border lines and I'm going to place mine over here. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the other side. And this is a placement that when I tried it on, I really liked it. Since this is a placement I like, I just put four stitch markers to help me keep it in place while I sew it. So I'm just going to go through the bottom and I'm going to go in and out of every stitch. If you skip stitches instead of going in every single one, there might be some flaring and it won't lay as flat. So I'm just going to go in and out in all of the stitches. I just finished sewing one of the horns and it's really nice and firm and now for the loose ends you just tie it off like normal and then you just cut it off. Now we're going to do the same thing for the other side and you're done. This is the final result and I hope that you guys enjoy this video. So happy Halloween and I'll see you guys next week.